Cheers everyone, Chase here from the Cruiser Cult. Happy Saturday. Uh, this week we're gonna be getting into this situation, an FJ40 parking, uh, rear emergency parking drum. Um, as you can see, coated in grease, pads are coated in grease. This is a really common uh, issue when the F40s get this old due to a single lip seal issue here on the uh, transfer case output shaft. Now today we'll be installing a beautiful dual seal upgraded housing from Valley Hybrids. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get into how to do this swap today. Let's get into it. All right, so I figured I'd do a little order operations here so everyone knew or knows kind of what they're gonna get into when they go to upgrade the rear uh, dual lip uh, seal from Valley Hybrids. So first, uh, on both the, the rear drive shaft, um, I like to get the transfer case end of the drive shaft, the nuts off first so that it's loose, ready to go. Then I go to the differential side, undo those bolts, and then the whole thing can just be gently um, lowered from the vehicle. I don't like to unbolt the differential end of the drive shaft first. It's kind of, it might just, you know, kind of drop and droop and then get in your way when you go to unbolt uh, from the rear drum. So I like to do the transfer case end first. Then what you're going to encounter when you take off the drive shaft is either a castle nut with a cotter pin or potentially a stake nut. Um, that's just a, a nut without the, the castling there and it's been um, hit to um, prevent it from loosening on its own. In the case of uh, the castle nut, you're gonna wanna remove the cotter pin. In the case of the, one of the stake nuts, um, just get the correct size socket and impact wrench and uh, loosen the nut. Uh, don't worry about trying to undo the, the punched, uh, punched in part of the nut. It's soft, so it'll um, just correct itself when you loosen it. Um, in my case, it ended up being a uh, 29 millimeter castle nut, which is kind of an odd size. I thought it was going to be 27, um, but measure uh, measure your uh, rear output shaft nut first before you, uh, you know, so you have the right tools ready to go. Once you take that off, there'll be a little washer here, and then this whole assembly will just uh, slide right off. You can see this is really caked in grease. So once you take that off, um, you'll actually encounter the uh, brake backing plate hardware. Um, you can, I just unbolted the whole thing and disassembled it afterwards. So basically you'll encounter four 12 millimeter bolts. Uh, someone's been into this transfer case before and used uh, some wonderful 13 millimeter head bolts, uh, which is always a joy. Um, so undo those four bolts from the back of the housing there. And then the whole uh, parking brake backing plate could uh, just come off. And it's up to you whether you want to disassemble the brake hardware before or after you take that backing plate off, uh, but it's only held on by four bolts. So once you take off those four bolts, you'll encounter this housing here. And what you'll want to do to get this housing off is unscrew your speedometer cable there, and then you will encounter um, five 12 millimeter uh, bolts here. Mine were heavily caked in very old grease and I had to really chisel um, the old grease off to even get access to the heads for the socket. So just be prepared for that. Um, and then once you take that off, uh, your old uh, housing will have this very thin metal shim. So make sure not to lose that. Um, I didn't even notice it at first, it sits so flush. So just beware and uh, save that. Then you'll get to the parking brake hardware. Um, and again, it's up to you whether you wanna do this before you take the backing plate off the face here or uh, after, I chose after just because it's easier to manipulate it when I could flop it around and see back and forth. Uh, and yeah, so when, you know, the reverse, you're gonna wanna put this on here. Um, you know, this, you can see here, this nice dual lip here in the upgraded valley uh, hybrids housing versus the original one seal there. And so you can see it's a definite improvement on sealing quality uh, when you're uh, upgrading this housing and it's much needed. As you can see, this is heavily caked in grease, which pretty much mooted the whole point of having a parking brake since the pads are just soaked in grease rubbing against a uh, greasy drum. So yeah, hopefully this is um, helpful to see kind of the order operations, know kind of what you're getting into, what size wrenches you're going to need. Um, and yeah, so let's do the reverse here and get this all back installed. I have a park nice uh, new shoes and parking brake hardware from Cruiser Outfitters and the wonderful uh, new housing from Valley Hybrids. So let's get this all back together and cleaned up. Hey everyone. Uh, all right, so I got the parking brake uh, set back up. Everything bolted in pretty easily, the old housing. 
speedometer housing, got the old speedometer housing, cable hooked up, um, brake hardware kit, pretty easy to install, straightforward. It's always good to take a picture of a drum brake setup before you take it apart so you know exactly how it's supposed to go together. It gave a really light coating of uh, brake grease on the contact surfaces between the drum brake and the rear backing plate just so you don't have any squeaks and the, the mechanisms, uh, the pads slide nicely against the backing plate. Uh, one issue I had uh, with this uh, parking brake kit, and I don't know if that's an early FJ40 thing, is the ends of the, the shoes here were actually the metal's too thick to fit into this adjusting mechanism. I thought maybe, maybe I got a wrong kit or it's crazy, but apparently someone a long time ago also had this issue. These are the old grease co uh, coated pads, but you can see someone really ground down the ends as well. They also had issues with that. Um, fitting in the adjuster mechanism there. So I don't know, again, that could be an early FJ40 thing, but just heads up, you might have to end up grinding these down to fit uh, in the adjusting mechanism. Uh, again, oh, and also I misspoke earlier, this, this nut ended up being a 28 millimeter, not 29. And I believe an original one would have been 27. Um, but yeah, it's, this is a super easy project. It's not really, you know, that difficult. Uh, you know, it probably get it done in an afternoon. Um, like I did once you have all the parts I go back and forth to the store a little bit there because I'm working remotely So I don't have everything in front of me um, But you know the, the housing the kit is really nice uh, Valley hybrids really did a really good job putting together this kit super straightforward um, And yeah, so once you get the brake done get everything adjusted Put this you know rear drum back on and then we'll put on the uh, rear output shaft um, nut here and I believe the torque for the early FJ40 is about 103 foot-pounds of torque um, so yeah just a heads up on that so you have a good torque wrench for that and yeah hopefully uh, you know it's just is good this is a good demonstration for anyone thinking about this project definitely do it worthwhile really not that difficult and it solves a very common um, you know gear oil leaking issue here on our FJ40s so instead of one ceiling lip you get two definitely worthwhile reach out to Valley Hybrids everyone Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Cheers.